Hello folks, this is Jamil Sir for Gunstock Reviews. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona at Enlo Custom Guns with Marty. How you doing, buddy? Good. And we got a couple of Bushmasters here. But before we do that, I'd like to ask you to please like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel so we can continue to bring you content like this. Marty, what do we have here? We have a Bushmaster from the early 90s. With it. Now, you worked on this gun before. Um, we took that uh, floating handguard. Uh, this is Dave's rifle. Uh, it's an A1 uh, with pretty much early 90s mm -hmm. uh, configuration with a teardrop uh, forward assist. Uh, this is not original. This is fairly new, but mm -hmm. hey, you know, we're not going to get picky about that. You did a really good job bringing this back to almost um, spec because it has a, a bull barrel. Okay. But this yeah. is a 2023 Bushmaster. Right. And this is two generations removed from this one. Because mm -hmm. this one is the old Wyndham Main Bushmaster. Mm -hmm. And this is the brand new Bushmaster company. Mm -hmm. In the middle, Remington bought, bought Bushmaster. Yeah. And, and then they went under mm -hmm. a few years ago. And they were purchased by this company who's starting the Bushmaster um, brand again. Yeah. They're located in Sparks, Nevada. Oh, okay. This new company is, a, as I was explained, is again an investor group mm. that purchased the name and they are building, bringing back all the, the whole line, even including the ACR. Mm. Even though the price of the ACR is $6,000. So uh, I don't think they're... they're trying to push that one as much as they're putting uh, the, putting effort the, into the AR business, into their uh, different brands. I mean, this one is the Patrolman's Rifle. Okay. Uh, originally, I wanted to get the basic, basic one with the A2 and add all the parts myself. Mm -hmm. But they had this one, so I said, oh, what the heck. Um, but this is the Patrolman's Rifle with a gray um, Magpul kit mm -hmm. it's funny because they have the fancy magpul rear uh the uh, butt stock mm -hmm. with a lock system on it yeah i forgot the name of it is this the ctr ctr yeah yeah and not the moe the moe doesn't have this right but it locks it up in place mm -hmm. and it's sturdier mm -hmm. than the moe it doesn't rattle as much as the moe yeah it's a nice little uh upgrade yeah yeah it's a nice upgrade standard moe grip mm -hmm. and this is the moe sl Handguard, yeah. Uh, Handguard, they're a pain in the butt to put in. For me, <laughs> yeah, okay? okay? Not for you. But you have to remove the sling swivel yeah, that's to do right. that. Yeah. So you have to, it came in assembled like this. And this model, they sell it with and without the A2 handle. Mm -hmm. I got this one with the A2 handle, which is, um, you know, it's kind of cool. But we were discussing some of the features on it. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that the barrel is nitride heat treat, yeah. And so is the, the bolt the carrot bolt as well, yeah. yeah. Now I, I, there's different names for nit what processes what. Sometimes it's nitride, sometimes it's melanite or QPQ. But uh, uh, a, a good reason why you would uh, do the nitride heat treat on a barrel is that uh, it ends up being as hard as chrome. So in the olden days, you would you would bore out a rifle barrel, and it would be oversized, right? It would be slightly oversized, and as it was oversized, they would they would have chrome plating put inside. And so sometimes plating goes in, and it can be slightly uneven, right? Mm -hmm. So that unevenness is now a cheese grater and acting on your bullet. Yes, it lasts for a longer period of time, right? But uh, you know. It, it's a cumbersome process, and in the meantime, you know, Glock famously had their Tenifer, which is something very similar, right? But uh, what they would do is they would they would machine the rifling to the exact size, right? They would do this nitride heat treat process, and as they would do that, uh, they would get the resilience of chrome lining, and uh, even exterior, even on the on the outside, it's actually very strong, right? Because mm -hmm. it, think of it as like an eggshell, right? It's very hard on the outside, and the metal on the inside is is softer, but it actually it actually improves its resiliency. So yeah, it would actually make the barrel last longer. So and it's a cheaper process, which is so it's an improvement overall. And it makes the rifles. These rifles are mm -hmm. very well priced mm -hmm. on, on the retail level. Um, I think these are going to retail, you know, just tad over a thousand bucks. 
with the whole no, for the whole thing mm -hmm. with the Magpul furniture already on it, mm -hmm. way under a thousand dollars with the standard, you know, carbine furniture, parts, yeah. yeah, yeah, furniture on it, and without the hang the handle, um, it's kind of interesting. The handle is fun mm -hmm. if you want to shoot iron sights, but I don't. I want to have backup sights, so I have the Magpul uh, yeah. MOE rear sight, and because this is a patrolman's rifle. Mm -hmm. I have the patrol rifle optic from Aimpoint. Aimpoint yeah. This one is a, and one thing I do with these is I put the, the flip up sights as a flip down sights. Mm -hmm. So basically they land on the, uh, on the uh, handguard. Yeah, on the handguard, yeah. And back here, and they don't interfere on the top. Mm -hmm. So um, we're just gonna go ahead and take this handle off real quick, put the sights on, and adjust mm -hmm. it to the right place and put it on. The cool thing about this is, a, you know, yeah, it's a torque. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's self-torquing, yeah. Self-torquing. Or it has a uh, kind of a, a, a nut that you can't exceed a torque level. Yeah. Right? yeah. Ow, and it pinches yeah. your finger too. Yeah, yeah it will. Ow. So um, we're going to take Dave's rifle out of the way here. By the way, this is a really cool rifle. This is the old Bushmaster from, Dave says, the 90s. Right, Dave? She says, yes, he nodded. He should have tilted the camera up and down early to say 90s. Early, 90s. early 90s so this is probably 30 years ago this is today and let's go ahead and put this um, you know red dot on and the aim point I okay. mean aim point, the aim point and the Bushmaster okay. and the Magpul Magpul yes. <laughs> duh okay wake up yeah. oh. and one cool thing I like about those screws now with the with Magpul the is both uh Hex and or flat. Mm -hmm. sure I got that right. Yep. Okay. And let's loosen yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't loosen that. And it's kind of cool. You can keep this around because at some point you can use it, but. And I know this is a big point of contention with shooters where to put the red dot, oh, you have to put it in the back or you have to put it as close forward as possible. Um, I think it looks great. Um, let me look through it, but I think, yeah, and I'm gonna turn it on and see how close it is. Oh, it's right on windage. And I think it needs to, the dot needs to come down a tad. I'm gonna sight it in at 50 yards. So two inches low at 25, right? <laughs> I, I'm not familiar with that, that, that right there, but uh, I know uh, 50 yards and then your, your next intersect should be somewhere around 200. Yeah, because yeah. I, I talked to Freddie the other day and okay, said it's yeah. two inches, oh yeah, two inches low, Fre there's a good start. Fre Freddie would be the guy to know, but uh, yeah. he would also probably take his own aim point and throw it down the range and put it back on. No, 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 we're not gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna go with Freddie, we're mm. gonna do this, and we're gonna keep Freddie away from my aim point, because he's the kind of guy that does that demo. Do it with your own damn uh, aim point, not with mine, <laughs> you know, because he does that crap, and uh, he's insane. But then again, Marines are like that, man. Well, it, uh, what does that say? He says he, he believes in the aim point. Yeah, no, that. he does believe in the aim point, and I believe in it too, but I just don't want to push it. He doesn't believe in scratches. Yeah, yeah, I don't believe in, even though this one is scratched up to hell already. So, yeah, this one has been <laughs> wrote hot and put up wet. I've had this for over 10 years. And it's been on several rifles and all that. So it's going to be now on this Bushmaster. Um, overall, Marty, another thing I was looking is I like the way the machining on everything has mm -hmm. a pictogram on the side, has the mm -hmm. bullet with no line, with a line through it, a bullet, and then two bullets. Yeah. Even though this is semi-auto yeah. rifle, it has the markings for, you see, it doesn't go past. Yeah. But it has the three markings on it. And yeah, it says Carson City, Nevada, but I think they're in Sparks, but it's the same, okay. same thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, well. Bushmaster, I like the machining. I like, actually, as stupid as this sounds, I like the way they have the up in there and great laser engraved mm. and the finish. The mm -hmm. whole thing is. Well, uh, this one is a one in seven twist. That's uh, that uh, that's new for Bushmaster. So that's uh, that's a, a difference there, right? 
Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, in which case you can definitely run heavier bullets and, and not, not be, not be worried. Right. But, uh, you know, not say one in nine is just, a, it's a little too slow if you're going to be running like uh, 77 grain, uh, yeah. zero match Kings or, or, uh, you know, it's not, we're not military, but, uh, if you're shooting tracer rounds, right. But, uh, that, oh, yeah. that's the reason why one in seven twists is a thing. Well, yeah. And one of those things is not that I'm going to be airdropping into any mm -hmm. foreign country tonight. Yeah. So um, this is a great rifle mm -hmm. for home defense mm -hmm. to keep in your truck to whatever, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Ted Nugent hunts with it. So it's, it is a hunting rifle too. So I'm not going to, back when I lived in Nebraska, the guys used to grab their ARs and go shoot prairie dogs mm -hmm. all day long in Wyoming. Yeah. So it's, it's a really cool rifle. And the way it is set up right now is just the way I want it. And I think it's a great combination. Oh, you could get the gray rear sight if you want to be picky, but you know, this black one works just perfectly well. And we'll go for it, let's take it to the range. Actually, we need to go to the BLM ranges, uh, sight it in at, like I say, a 50, and then go to the BLM ranges. Because they are, there's a BLM range that goes from here uh, by the way, guys, those ranges are great. Uh, BLM, Bureau of Land Management, and mm -hmm. love the other BLM. Um, every time you buy a gun or ammo, 11% goes to the FET mm -hmm. tax, and that money goes to the Department of the Interior. Then 1% of that goes to making ranges. Mm. And they made three ranges here in Arizona, northwest of the valley, mm -hmm. and they have one that is uh, rifle only, from 200 to 500 yards, then another rifle only from 200 to 700 yards. Mm -hmm. These are steel plates, and then they have one that is pistol and rifle 100, 200. So it's pretty cool. So we're gonna take it there, shoot it. You know, maybe Marty can join us and have some fun with it. One of these days we'll have to, yeah. Awesome. Guys, thank you very much. Thanks for everything, thanks, thanks for watching, and please remain healthy, stay safe, and definitely have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our patron page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.